Bank of America releasing its July Consumer Check. This is what we need right now. The July Consumer Checkpoint. Tell us what exactly is going on with U.S. consumer spending and financial well-being. We've had a lot of mixed corporate results lately, for instance. Uh, but the survey finds overall spending for household last month. Or no, this month. This month. So far. Last month. June. June. Okay. Okay. Overall household spending for June down about half a percent after four consecutive months of growth. And also, how about the Taylor Swift effect? There was a 23 percent increase in spending in cities where her Eros tour took place in Europe in June. Joining us now is head of Bank of America Institute, Liz Everett Chrisberg. It's great to see you again. It's great to be here. So the... the the context for us, you know, we're going to get the CPI a little bit later today. Everyone trying to figure out, we heard from Pepsi, Delta, some kind of, you know, what, what do you think is going on with the consumer? So I think, as you said, in June, we saw overall card spending down about a half percent, which was the first negative print after four consecutive positive ones. But kind of let's take a step back. We're going into earnings. If you still look at the second quarter overall, consumer spending per household was up three tenths. So not sounding the alarm bells quite yet. And when you look at the composition of what was going on in spending, we continue to see services outperforming. Is all of this retail. real or nominal? Well, we'll see. We'll see at 8.30, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but in other we'll words, see. when you say you know, it was up for three months and then down, is that that's not inflation? In it's not words, inflation adjusted. Okay. Okay, okay. Correct. It's not, it's not inflation adjusted. But I think one of the things that really jumped out to me in the numbers is travel. And you guys were just talking about Delta. And if you look at the travel numbers in terms of the number of people who are traveling, it is booming, both domestically and internationally. And remember, last year was supposed to be revenge travel, summer of revenge travel. Well, if you look at the number of Bank of America households that are making transactions abroad, in June it was up 6% over last year. You know what's striking to me is the number of U.S. households that now have a passport, right? We all got used to this idea, I forget, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, it was, well, only 12% of U.S. households. Now we're up to like 50%. I mean, the, something like that. It's, it's really been a striking change. Yeah, it, it has. And, and what's it, what hasn't really changed is where people are going, right? So based on our data, they're still going to Mexico, Canada, U.K., France, and Italy. Hmm. But the Olympics are coming up later in this month, so we expect to see that again continue. And they're also traveling domestically. So when we look at the number of households who are making transactions outside of their region, that's also up not as much as the international travel, which is up six, but up three, you know, a little over three percent. And it's kind of ironic that Delta is a flip side of this. You know, it's, it's, there's so many seats. There's too many seats. <laughs> there's pressure on fares and well, so Well, I forth. don't know. I actually think it's somewhat consistent with the story. And Joe, somewhat consistent with the fact that every person is in the lounge with you, right? Everyone <laughs> is traveling. So they're sneezing in the buffet. There's no sneeze uh, thing either. No, oh, that, that, yeah. So gotta, I, I told Kelly, it, it was, when Gra Groucho said it was, fun, I don't, a lounge that will accept people like me, I don't want to go into it. <laughs> I don't want to be there. They need a higher standard than that, so, you know, no thank well, you. Because then you'll be alone in the lower... I, I would get a, and I would get a passport if it only, if it was like Italy only. That's really, you know, if I could get one. Well, that, there, are, there, there are a lot are of Are there people. things like that? I, I don't know, but, but we can okay. talk to policymakers and figure, figure out how we can get that to happen for you. But, but going back to, um, to what we're seeing in the, in the spend, in the, on the travel side, is actual travel spend was down last month, even though so many more people are going. And again, we'll see at 8.30 what the updated CPI numbers are. But if you look back in May, airlines were down almost 9%, car rent, year 6%. Year year, yeah. Wow. Car rentals were down. So there is some deflation going on in the travel space, but volumes are picking you said, up. Talk, you said it deflate. I talk about this sometimes. We talk about potato chips and things like that. And people are like, what are you talking about? There's e-commerce deflation. There's furniture deflation. There's apparel deflation. Like, you went, you said the D word. You know, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're undoing what have the 20% hikes of the past four years. But what it means is for companies who are dependent on this, it's a massive problem for them. It could mean layoffs if they don't right size. Well, let's talk about, you said layoffs, so let's talk about the labor market because that's obviously been a big topic of discussion over the last two days. So what is the Bank of America data telling us about the labor market? We are seeing some signs of a slowdown, but it's gradual. And we're seeing that in a couple of places. First, when we look at wages and, you know, Bank of America Institute, what we look at is the money, after-tax money actually coming into accounts. And what we're seeing there is we are seeing wage growth and income growth across lower, middle, and higher income households. And lower income households continue to be going up at the highest rate, about 3% in June. 
but that is lower than it has been over the past two years. Mm. So their lower income households are up 3%, but they Does were up four, five, six. Exactly. And, and I guess when we then hear from trying to think of some of the blowups we've had lately, I mean, some of these companies who are talking about the consumers choosier, the low end consumer and the macro people who say, you know, those excess savings are running out and things like that. I mean, does this paint that picture for you? I think, again, I think we're seeing the labor market cooling, but very gradually. And in another another area that where I would just kind of point that out, we can also understand when people are changing jobs mm. and we had the great resignation when everyone was changing jobs and people who changed jobs were getting very significant pay bumps. Well, when we last looked at this, we had about 3% turnover. So about 3% of our consumers were changing jobs. But the amount of money that they were getting when they changed jobs back in the great resignation was north of 20%. It's wow. less than half of that now. Wow. So job changers are getting a bump, medium bump of about 10%, which is not insignificant. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily going to drive the same consumer behavior Great point. as when you were getting more than double that.